<coughs> it seems like you've done a, a very good job of uh, defining and what our, our problems are in the state. Um, personally, I don't have much reason to feel optimistic that anything is going to change. Do you see any glimmer of hope that things may change a little bit? Um, personally, in the last three years or so, I've seen maybe 25 of my friends and acquaintances solve the problems that they've had in Connecticut by moving to Alabama, Virginia, Ohio, Maryland, uh, North Carolina, and Massachusetts. They were all, you know, basically very conservative people, probably very, um, you know, in the Republican camp who are now not in here. I mean, so, I mean, it's just, you know, anecdotally, uh, you hear about other states recommending welfare type people moving into Connecticut, and many have, who are usually very reliable Democrat voters. I see no reason to feel optimistic. And in fact, uh, you know, I'm weighing my options. I've lived here my whole life in Connecticut, and I mean, I'm almost ready to, you know. Yeah, I mean, your story's common, and it's been told over and over again. My friends, too, have left the state. Sad for me and sad for my kids. The the hope that I see is I look at a room like this. You know, I don't know if we had this four years ago. You'd have this kind of time. But there's no organize. You no. Know, who's well, the leader of these people who will I, it, I some kind of force? I hear you. I hear you, and, and, and you're right about that. And I think that's kind of the disadvantage that, that the average American, the average Connecticut citizen has, is the lack of organization. But I think we're beginning to organize ourselves, we're beginning to organize ourselves at a grassroots level and up through political process. So listen. I, I'm not saying well, I mean, we're I'm not saying we want I'm not saying we're we're gonna win and Connecticut government's gonna change tomorrow. It's not. But this this is encouraging. The fact that you're here, the fact that everybody else is here, and I want you to build on I'll give you I'll give you an example and, and believe me, we know where you're coming from, but let me give you a concrete example. A lot of people most common thing you said is that we can't do anything, we don't have any power to do anything. Well think about all the package store owners that have one or two employees, three employees. And they're being told they're basically being put out of business. The governor introduces a bill that's designed to, you know, help out the big liquor stores and supermarkets. That's it. You've got your little store. See you later. We got a better plan. Well, they had 800 to 1,000 of those folks show up one day for hearing. Now they can't even get time off, but they had 800 to 1,000 people. And because they showed up and because they called everybody, and I mean everybody, and it was their livelihood. Not only did the governor and I get his proposal to put him out of business, and he really worked hard at doing it, but this year, the same bill came up, and it couldn't even get out of committee for where it was. And that's because everybody started making the effort to try and to, he tried to do it again, and everybody else responded. So we are held accountable, to people, including the governor. And let me tell you, if we hear enough noise, you hear enough people, and you want to get reelected, you do what the people say. Where? There was 41,000 people on the Capitol Lawn in 91, and we still got the income Yeah, well, right. there's, always, no. there's always an exception to that. Here, here's what I'd say to you, because you're, you're talking the wrong guy. I'm a Mets fan, okay? It's so I think we're going to win. So I'm always optimistic, okay? And we're going to keep fighting. And we want you to stay. We don't want you to leave. Yep.